Hey y'all, y'all ready for Soul Food Sunday? Honey, we are making fried pork chops, some garlic mashed potatoes and gravy, some corn as well as a cabbage kale mix. Y'all, you are going to love it. Check out my ebook if you love Southern cooking. And baby, we're gonna get started first with the pork chops. Now I have four pork chops here. As you can see, they got a little thickness on them, okay? I feel like the chops come out juicier if you use one that's a little bit thicker and you don't got them thin chops, so make sure you go for that. I am going to season them to my liking. I have some saison, some smoked paprika, lemon pepper, salt and pepper, of course, to my own taste, some garlic powder, some mustard, and just a little bit of buttermilk. Look, don't be going to fifth on the whole cow on these pork chops. There's only four of them. Then you are going to go in there and massage these pork chops a little bit. You want that seasoning to get up in there. All right. But we also need to flip over the pork chop and add some more seasoning to the other side because we eat both sides of the meat. Okay. So I'm going to go in with some more garlic powder, more lemon pepper, a little more salt, smoked paprika, everything you just saw me use. Now I know y'all saw me use poultry magic, but you know what? These labels don't tell us what to do. Okay. We just put whatever we want on our food. I'm going to let this rest for an hour at room temperature to marinate. And also when it comes to room temperature, it'll be better for frying. I don't care what nobody say. I shall use grocery bags to fry my meat. I think the cleanup is just easier. So we gonna, we have a little, you know, Walmart versus Target situation with these bags. And I'm going to put the same seasonings that I put on the pork chop in the flour. Anybody trying to tell you that you can't use your grocery bag to flour your meat, get them out your life. You don't need that negativity in your life because they want you to do more dishes. And I ain't trying to do that. Okay, so I'm going to put in my pork chops and I'm just going to rub them around in my grocery bags and they are going to get a nice light coating. Okay, well, if you want the thicker coating, you could, you know, dip it in egg and then dip it back inside of the flour. But I just personally don't prefer that on a pork chop. I'm going to shake off any excess coating and I'm going to place these on the side on a tray before I fry them. While I have been doing this, I've had my oil heating up on like a medium high heat. On an electric stove, that would be about a seven and a half. I'm going to test my oil by just throwing in a little bit of flour. If you hear that little sizzle, you will know that your oil is nice and hot. I am going to put all four of my pork chops in here at the same time because honestly, I just didn't want to do two batches. But if I'm being truthful with y'all, I should have did three and then did one or did two and two. But you know what? We're not going to worry about that because I still ate these pork chops. Okay. Now, after about five minutes, I went and flipped it. You don't want to move it before that time because you don't want your coating to come off. So you don't want to keep flipping them over and over. So I turned it and I cooked it for about five to six more minutes on the other side. Even though I'm doing this in my cast iron skillet, this would be so much easier if I was doing this in a deep fryer. I just don't have one, but if you have one, baby, go ahead and use it. Now, look at this nice and golden and crispy poop shop. I'm going to set this aside on a baking rack to drain, and then I'm going to show you these garlic mashed potatoes. Oh my goodness, these were so good. Now, I'm going to show y'all a little hack, okay, a little trick on how to get some really creamy and mashed potatoes as well as some easy flavor into them. So make sure y'all pay attention. First off, I'm going to peel my potatoes, and then I'm going to cut them into about one-inch pieces. That is going to make them easier for mashing, and after I cut them, I'm going to put them in some water because y'all know I don't want the potatoes to get brown and just mess up the whole look of the dish. Then, of course, I am going to put on some boiling water and I'm going to generously salt this because y'all, we, we don't want no bland potatoes, all right? Y'all know potatoes be struggling when it comes to flavor. I'm going to cook the potatoes for about 15 to 20 minutes and look now, look now, I'm telling y'all, this is a secret. Add in about half of the package, or really you could even do the whole package, of these roasted garlic potatoes. This will not taste like them school cafeteria potatoes. I promise you that. Okay, I promise you. All right. Put in about half the packet. Then you're going to add in about three-fourths of a cup of heavy cream and about a fourth of a cup of sour cream. I'm going to use about a teaspoon of roasted garlic bouillon. I'm going to salt and pepper just to my taste, and I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to begin to mash. You also want to add butter to your liking, because you know butter make everything better. 
And in total, I used about three tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna work that in and I find that the roasted garlic instant potatoes adds a good flavor and also a good texture to the potatoes okay if you try this let me know because this really was good if you decide to use the whole package then you're going to need to add extra half and half i am taking it easy and just using a little package of brown gravy today y'all i wasn't in the mood to make this from the scratch all right but i am going to add in about half a tablespoon of butter and just a pinch of beef bouillon to just up the flavor we know don't nothing taste like homemade but today we was just keeping it easy all right next up we have some delicious kale and cabbage stir fry first i'm gonna go in with two slices of bacon now while i love fat this bacon was just doing the absolute most. So I went in and I scooped out a few tablespoons of that bacon grease and I just saved that for another recipe. All right, then I'm going to go in with some sliced up onions as well as a jalapeno with no seeds and some sweet peppers. I love the color that the peppers add to these vegetables and they also add a lot of nutrition. I'm gonna saute this for about two minutes before I put in a small cabbage I've sliced up and a bunch of kale that I've cleaned and picked out a lot of the bigger stems and I'm going to add that. I am going to try to toss this a little bit and then I'm going to put in about half of a cup of some hot water. I'm gonna cover this and let this cook on medium for about five minutes. After that time, you will see that the greens are really nice and bright and you can go in with a little bit of seasoning. I am going to start by putting in a bit of Creole seasoning, pretty much just to my taste. Now these greens were still a little too much crunchy for me. All right, so then I covered it and then I let it cook again for about five to seven more minutes. At this point, this was a texture that I wanted. So I added in some smoked paprika, a little bit of vegeta. You can find this on Amazon or in some international stores, but you can also substitute a little bit of chicken bouillon. When I mix it together, baby, when I tell you this was good, Hey man, y'all, this was so good. Now, the last thing I'm going to add to this meal is some simple, buttery, creamy corn. I am putting in some butter, a little bit of frozen corn, but canned corn would also work. I am going to add in some half and half to make this nice and creamy, just a little bit, with a touch of water as well. A pinch of salt and sugar is going to bring out the flavors in that corn. And I'm just gonna cover this up and allow this to simmer for about seven minutes on medium heat because the corn needs to defrost. And y'all, do you see this plate? And do you want some, honey? We are eating, eating today. You guys know I love you and Jesus loves you. And I'm gonna see you next time in Camille's Kitchen. Goodbye and God bless.